Hello everyone, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another Java tutorial. Last lesson we uh, created an integer variable and we assigned a number to it and then we set up a if statement uh, to compare the contents of this variable with a number and if this condition was true we executed a statement otherwise we executed another statement so hopefully you already know how to do that uh, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, show you guys how to comment so a comment in programming is basically you writing sticky notes next to your program so the comments won't do anything so if you type something here right now and you try to remind yourself about something and you say this is a program that uh, compares whether a number is bigger than 3. Now if you do that, what's going to happen is um, when you're compiling it, the Java compiler thinks that this is all in Java. So it tries to make sense of it, but it couldn't. So what you need to do is in front of it put two slashes and as soon as you do that, the Java compiler will ignore everything that's on this line, right? Because, um, because uh, it knows that it's just a sticky note. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to comment out all of this code here because we don't need it right now. So in order to do that, in order to comment multiple lines, what you would do is you would put a one slash and then a star after it and you can see here all of this code is commented out and then after the brace for the else statement we're gonna put star slash and that will finish the comment right there so all of this from here to here is now um, a comment so now the program ignores all of that when we run it nothing will happen right when we run it nothing happens okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys another type of variable called double so a double is basically like an integer but it, it, you're allowed to put decimal numbers in so for example if I put 3.56 okay that is allowed and I'm just gonna print it out to the console so that you can um, see it. All right, so if I compile this code now, it outputs 3.56 to the screen, right? Because I've assigned the number 3.56 to the variable called number, and then I'm displaying that variable onto the screen. Now, notice how if I change this to int, it's not going to work anymore, right? Because 3.56 does not is not an integer. An integer is a number that does not have any uh, decimal places. So if I run this now, right, error exists, proceed. It says error, type mismatch, double does not convert to an int. Cannot convert from double to int. Now, however, all is not lost. If we want to convert a number from a double to an int, in other words, we run a round, we want to round it down to just three, what you would do is you just type bracket int in front of it. And what happens is it'll simply round this number down so it'll output three it'll run it will round this number down to three put it inside the number variable and then output the number variable so if we run this now it outputs three to the screen okay so that is a very useful way of uh, converting from double to int Okay, the next thing we want to do is show you guys how to generate 
a random number. So if I want to generate a random number, let's go back to double again. Make this a double variable. And then I'm going to use math.random. So this is the first function that I'm introducing you guys to. So a function is basically a section of code that is pre-written. And in order to execute that statement, uh, that list of statements, we just execute the function. So there's a whole bunch of code behind how to generate a random number. We don't know what it is, but basically if I execute, if I run this function, it just gives me a random number. So this function belongs to the class math. Okay, so you can gradually gain an understanding of classes. Basically, each class has a list of, or most classes would have a list of uh, functions or methods that you can run that will do stuff. Okay, so the math class has the random method or function which you can run to make it generate a random number. So if I run this now, then you can see here that it will generate a random number and it'll be different every time. So right now it's 0 0.094. If I run this again, it's 0 0.637. So what this is generating is a random number between 0 and 1. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is multiply this number by 6. Okay, if we multiply it by 6, what happens is that whatever result we had before between 0 and 1, it's multiplied by 6. So that now what we're getting is pretty much a random number between 0 and 6. Right, so 3.5, 0 0.3. So every number that you can get okay, from running this program down the bottom here is between 0 and 6. And now what we want to do is we want to convert it to an integer. So bracket int in front of it. And you will see that all the numbers that we will get now will be between 0 and 5. So if you run it, um, so the, the reason why it's not working right now is because I have double in front. So let's change that to int and let's run it. Oops. It's all zero right now, which is a bit funny. So let's put a bracket around here. Ugh. So right now I'm getting numbers between zero and five, right? Because they all rounded down. So you won't see anything smaller than 0, and you won't see anything bigger than 5. Okay, do we get a 5? I'm just waiting for a 5 to come up. Yeah. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to plus 1 to the result. So let's simply put plus 1 at the end of all of this. So let's put a br big bracket around all of this and put plus one at the end. So what that means is we generate a random number between zero and six. We round it down and then we add one to it. So if we do that, we should get a number between uh, one and six. So let's run this now. You can see we got a four, four, two, five, six, six, two, one, six. Okay, so that's how you generate a random number between one and six. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.